Welcome to the Quick Sub F1 podcast. My name is Nasha, and you could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with us. I appreciate that. Now, normally, I would say, joining me is my co-host and co-founder, Tani Spanda. Unfortunately, we just done one of the greatest podcast episodes you will ever hear in your life, and we had technical issues. And unfortunately... It's uh, unsalvageable as a podcast, but we're going to try and bring you snippets of that. We had an incredible guest, Tony Cowan Brown, uh, F1 content creator, um, influencer, activist, all of them things there, uh, who was an incredible guest. Tandy was in incredible form, uh, and unfortunately, we can't bring that to you. So you've got me. You've got me. I'm going to give you a race review um, and I'm going to try and do my best, guys, okay? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Tony. I'm sorry, Tandy. But the show goes on, okay? The show goes on. There was no way that we would not give you guys a podcast episode on a Tuesday for you to consume. So here we are. And if you are here and, you know, you know what? For Tandy's birthday, as a birthday present, smash the like button. I want to see the most amount of likes we've ever seen. Let's cheer Tandy up, who, you know, she's she's like, she wanted to be here for you to celebrate her birthday, and she can't be. So smash that like button. Give us a subscribe. If you're watching, uh, if you're listening on Spotify, give us a five-star review. Thank you, guys. We reached 500 Spotify Reviews. That's incredible. With a rating of 4.6. Are you daft? That's incredible. That is actually ridiculous. So thank you so much, guys. Apple Podcast Reviews, as always, if you want an ad-free stream. Check out the Patreon. Link below. And what we witnessed this weekend was an absolute madness, guys. Austrian Grand Prix. Picturesque venue. In Austria, the Red Bull Ring, drama galore. Drama galore. I mean, look, where do we start? We can start on Friday. And Sergio Perez, track limits, qualifying in the end in 15th place or starting 15th on the grid. Didn't look good. Did not look good at all, I must say. Mm, I was calling him a fraud. Felt like I needed to be a fraud watch four times in a row. Sergio Perez failed to reach the third section of qualifying, also known as Q3. <laughs> um, and yeah, I mean, what, what do you guys think about that? Let us know in the comments below because it was pretty telling. Christian Horner after the race. I mean, I think I read on Sky Sports I'll get the article up now and I will send it to you, Chris. Don't you worry. So the YouTube guys can see it in all its glory on the YouTube. But in their article uh, on Sky Sports, they described Christian Horner as, I think they described him as apole apoleptic. Um, yeah, they said that he was sharing his frustration after, uh, after Sergio Perez dropped out in Q2. And here he goes. And I quote, Red Bull team principal Christian Horner's patience with Perez finally seemed to have run out as he vented his frustration over the incident in a post-session interview with Sky Sports. Horner's outburst only added to speculation around the paddock over whether Perez will be given the opportunity to see out the final year of his contract next season. And, I mean, it was bad. It was bad. Like, you can't do that, Sergio. You can't do them things there. But he made up for it in the race. But the big, big talking point, the big talking point was track limit. Track limit. I mean, fast doesn't even begin to describe what we saw at the Red Bull Ring this weekend. I think there were 47 laps deleted uh, on... Friday during qualifying. Also, guys, sorry. I'm just going to let you know. I've got a bit of a runny nose. So if I keep touching my nose, that is why I am sorry. Um, 47 laps deleted on Friday. 
We then get to we then get to Sunday and a situation where Lando Norris is on the radio. Beep, 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 beep. Absolutely every minute behind Lewis Hamilton, calling out Lewis for all of the violations that he felt Lewis was doing in breaking track limits. And then if you don't know, at the Red Bull ring, not that many corners. I think it's the shortest uh, circuit on the uh, on the calendar. Shortest amount of corners, or least amount of corners. I think only 10 corners. So turns 9 and 10, which are the final two corners before the start, finish straight. Two right-hand corners. The drivers were exceeding track limits at that all weekend. And look, there's a lot of debate. What should Formula One do? Alpine, not Alpine, Aston Martin put in a uh, an appeal at the end of the race to say that they believed Lando Norris was exceeding track limits himself. So on top of the nine drivers who received their own penalties during the race, Aston Martin were trying to get Alonso up the field into fourth place. Uh, when, uh, into fifth place or into fourth place, whatever. As a result, FIA had to admit that they had 1,200 infringements to look at. That is crazy. 1,200 infringements of track limits that they had to look at. Chris Medland here says on his tweet, the FIA say there were 1,200 times they had to look at potential track limit infringements and prior to the submission of a protest against the result, we had already begun a full review of the track limit infringements which is ongoing. This is unacceptable. Guys, it's unacceptable. We are at the pinnacle of motorsport. There's no other category of sport which is as technical, as engineering related, as fast. And you're telling me that there are 1,200 times that three guys in freshly ironed white FIA shirts made by Alpha Tauri sitting there in that room having to go over camera footage no sensors, no like little lasers, no VAR, no Hawkeye, as we've got in every other sport. We simply have some men in a room volunteering to look at all of this footage and then come back to us with results in a way that made us wait for hours after the race was over. Ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. I can't, like, there's just no other sport. There's no other sport that does this. Brother, imagine the Super Bowl. And they're like, there was a flag thrown in the play. Or maybe, like, afterwards, they're like, oh, winning touchdown. Just been scored in the Super Bowl. But now we're going to look back at all the flag infringements that we didn't do during there. And we're going to see if some of the tries, not tries, oh my God, that's rugby. We could say the same thing. Were there penalties applied that we could have applied? Were there infringements that we didn't apply that could have affected the result of the race? I'm sitting here sipping on a rum and coke, chewing on ice, I don't have a fucking answer as to why F1 thinks it's appropriate that for hours after a race, they need to pour through footage of a race to see if there was any infringements or rule breaking and then apply those infringements and rule breaking to the result after the race. I think I saw Brad Philpott's tweet. Two seconds. Oh my God, guys, my nose is running so much. I am so sorry. But Bradley Philpott said something which was really, 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 um, really interesting. And that the drivers themselves didn't even know. They didn't even know. He said, imagine you were parked on a street with no signs and you were racking up parking tickets, but they weren't being mailed to you. And then suddenly you get hauled to jail for not paying the fines. That's 
what happened in F1 today. That's ridiculous. These drivers are driving at the limit. They are endurance athletes trying to extract hundreds of a second, thousands of a second, driving at 200 miles per hour. Max Verstappen's pole lap in Austria was an average speed of 150 miles per hour. You're asking them, oh no, you're saying to them that you've got all of this runoff area. Yes, of course, the white lines are there. If there was a wall there, they wouldn't be going off. Or if there was a wall there, the punishment for going off would be a deterrent for them in the race, right? They would they would get out of the race. We have saw it in Monaco. They were brushing that chicane all through that race. Some people made it through. Most people made it through. Other people didn't. Max Verstappen, freaking Mario Kart his way around Monaco, still got pole position. Risk reward is there. But what you can't have is a situation where you're saying, we're going to allow you to go out there, but we'll delete your time. But we're not going to tell you at the time you do it. We're going to tell you four hours after the race. And it's going to affect the position that you finish the race in. That's going to affect your championship points. Could affect your bonuses. Could affect people's bonuses at the factory. The teams are losing points. We can't carry on in this manner. We simply cannot carry on in this manner. I remember uh, a quote from Gunter Steiner, who said something along the lines of... I can't find the quote, but he said something... Chris has got that. He said something along the lines of... We've been talking about this for years. We can't have volunteer stewards. There needs to be professional stewards here because the situation that we have now just cannot run. And the fact that, personally, I think that is quite telling. And look, this is not me and my fucking Team LH. I love you, Lewis. Team LH! This is not me and my Team LH bag, like, oh, Lewis is being singled out or whatever. But it's very telling that no penalties were given until Lewis Hammond got his penalties. And the reason Lewis Hammond got his penalties is because the person that was making it clear to the stewards that Lewis Hammond was violating track limits was Lando Norris. So they had no choice but to investigate it because it was being publicly made on a worldwide feed that Lewis is breaking track limits. Once you do that, the floodgates are going to open. Because you can't, and what they rightfully did, you can't just look at one driver, so you have to look at them all. But they don't have the capacity. They don't have the facilities for that big man. So what we have is a farcical situation where some of the penalties handed out after the race are ridiculous. We've got a situation where 83 deleted lap times occurred in the end. Out of 1,200. But don't worry. The top three were not affected. Now look, guys. I'm not saying that the top three definitely deserve to get penalties. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, on the law of averages... It's strange that before they'd gone through the 1,200 breaches, that they were confident that the top three were not affected. That doesn't make sense to me. And it goes more to the point of, is it the show or is it a sport? Is it the spectacle or is it the contest? What are we doing here? Yes, you want to save face. You've had people spray champagne. People have got trophies. We don't want to see race results changed after a race, especially on the podium. That's where all the press is. That's where all the news stories are. It's a big story if Sergio Perez makes his way up from 15th to 3rd. Heroic battle with Carlos Sainz. And almost save his career type performance. But if he 
has one more track violation, uh, one more track limits violation, he's out of the podium. What do we say there? Max Verstappen, let's say Max Verstappen racked up enough track, uh, track limit violations to get a 10 second penalty. Are we going to take that win away from him? He's just moved clear of Ayrton Senna in the in the in the all time list. He's now fifth most successful driver in terms of win in the history of F one. I'm not saying that I wanted Max to get a penalty. Don't get me wrong, I would have loved it. Oh my god, that would have hit like crack. I would have been there, little rubber coin. <laughs> That's that good stuff right there. In the word of Shannon Sharp. But it would have been a farce with the sport. It would have been really harsh on Max. And the fact that he pitted from a 23, 24 second lead to take fastest lap. But then you're saying, oh, actually, he's got five track limit violations. We're going to give you a 10 second penalty. We're taking that away. When Red Bull Red Bull would have kicked off. And I'm just saying this in terms of potentials, right? But this is what we had in Abu Dhabi, where, oh, we can't possibly be seen to be chasing the big race results for the sake of the, the face of the sport. Not the face of the sport in Max, the face of our reputation. And that can't run, man. That cannot run. You cannot do that. And it's just sad, man. I love this sport. I really do. And if this was like the first time this had happened, I think I'd be like, you know what? They'll learn from it. But they don't ever seem to learn from it. They have all the resources in the world. Why don't we have a set of stewards who are paid yearly to go to races and that is their job and you know what if you're in a circuit like Austria where it's clear there's going to be track violations why can't we pay someone to sit in front of a tv and watch all 20 cars go through there and find their track violations or why can't we have a technological solution to what's happening right now whether that's some kind of sensors whether that's some kind of I don't know. There's got to be something. There's got to be something. If they can tell offside on a moving player to within their fucking toenail in football, surely there's got to be a way that we can do this in F1. There's got to be a way, guys. Because right now, this is just, this is not worth it. Because what we're doing is discussing a race that had great wheel to wheel action. We had drama over three days. Whether you agree with the sprint format or not, what it gave us was some drama on Friday, some drama on Saturday, and some drama on Sunday. And what's the big talking point? Is it Checo versus Carlos? Is it Max Verstappen's Pretty imperious drive on Sunday afternoon. Yeah, he's got a rocket ship, but he did what he had to do. Just He's just gone past Ayrton Senna, guys. One of the most iconic drivers in the sport. Probably after Lewis Hamilton, the guy that I would say globally has the most cross pollination kind of like transcending F1 kind of thing where people who aren't even really into F1 don't they know about Aaron Senna that no one cares that could be for a few reasons but what we're caring about more right now is track limits and that's not good but I want to talk about the race so let's talk about the race and we'll get to the race after these messages from our sponsors You're watching Quicksilver F1. My name is Nasha. It's just me. 
Unfortunately, technical issues on the pod, so I'm bringing you a solo pod, solo thing, solo thing. Oh gosh! Oh god! Okay, okay. Oh shh! Oh my god! Oh my god! That's enough. Um, we're reviewing. Well, I'm reviewing the Austrian Grand Prix, and where do we start? Where do we start? Where do we start? Where do we start? There's so many places we can start. I would say, let's get into Mercedes. As Mercedes fan, not a good day at the office. Not a good day at the office at all. Miss W14 BBL, you know, she went to Miami, looking a little thicker. Results started to turn around. Canada, great result. Spain. Great result. You know? I'm thinking we can get used to this lifestyle. This weekend, not so good. And it was clear from the moment that Lewis and Mercedes kind of turned up with the track that they weren't comfortable with the car. George as well. I think George missed... George missed out on Q3, I want to say, potentially. Did he? Or maybe, maybe he got in and he didn't do... Didn't do too well. Let me get those up. We have the internet at our fingers. Uh, Austrian Grand Prix qualifying. Um, But they weren't, they didn't look good. They didn't look good. And at the end of the day, we have a situation where Aston Martin, with their updates, leapfrogs Mercedes. We have a situation where McLaren have come out of nowhere Updates on Lando Norris's car leapfrogged us him ahead of Lewis, qualified fourth on Friday. And that is when you have two customer teams qualifying in front of you. That's not good. Two customer teams finishing in front of you in the race. It's unacceptable. Unacceptable. And the crazy thing is. This car was supposed to give us a base level of consistency. We were supposed to know. Now, W4 in BBL. Chummy, the curves are there. Looking nice. Tight black fashion over dress. Hugging all the right places. One thing is not hugging. Corners. It's crazy. There's only 10 corners on this circuit. We're losing our time in all of them. Shit don't make sense. We've got a situation where Mercedes still don't know. <sighs> Look, it would be good if Mercedes were slow and they came out and they said, do you know what? We were slow because of X, Y, Z. You can go around Brackley right now. Go there now. Not now, when I'm recording, because it's late. But during business hours, go to Brackley, knock on the door, and say, ding, 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 ding. I need to talk to someone here about Miss W14 BBL. Why was she slow in Austria when she was so good in Spain and Canada? And you know what they say? There's no one here that can answer that query. I'm sorry. James Anderson can't answer that query. Tell you who can't. Mike Elliott, he definitely can't. He's out building boats. Toto Wolf can't answer it. George Russell can't answer it. Lewis Hamilton cannot answer it. <laughs> she said it's fucked up. And it just goes to show that for all the promise that was shown in Spain, in Canada, this car is still so track dependent and you can't win championships, let alone races with track dependent cars. I mean, you can win races. Look, Red Bull during the hybrid era, uh, turbo hybrid era, 2014 to, I guess, 2021, I guess, well, before 2021, where a circuit dependent team 
they would win Monaco because they had a great aero package, but their engine when they had Renault was rubbish. And then even in the beginning of the Honda years, it would only be every now and then that they'd be able to do well. I remember races like Brazil, where there was high altitude. Austria, they would do quite well sometimes as well. Whenever there was like a high altitude, they would seem to do quite well because it nullified Mercedes engine power due to heating and cooling, less air, or I think it's like less less air density to go through the, to, through the car or something like that. Anyway, Mercedes always struggle at those tracks. That would bring Red Bull in and they would win. That might happen to us, but with the Red Bull in those days, the redeeming feature was they had an incredible aero package. Okay, the engine might not be great, but at least the aero package, Adrian Newey, he knows what he's doing in that department, would kind of come through a certain tracks. We're not the best anywhere. There's not one circuit. Brazil, maybe. Maybe Brazil might be the one race. And we're clinging to that because of what happened last season. Brazil might be the one race of the season where Mercedes might be able to fight for a win. That's not until November. It's July. We've got another three races this month. None of us could predict where this car is going to finish or end up in any of the next three races. We could be on a variance from third to freaking eighth. That is crazy. Shit is crazy. All we can do is hold our hope. You know... We've got updates coming in Silverstone. Miss W14 BBL has got a little Harley Street appointment. For those who don't know, Harley Street is like a street in London, central London, where all of the surgeons are. Big, big money surgeons. You can get anything done on Harley Street. Teeth, hair, bum, lipo, all of them things there. And apparently there's a big surgery needed, big update coming on Silverstone. And look, last time we had big uh, update packages, Silverstone, we won in 2021. So, who knows? Who knows? But not looking good. I'm not going to give too much to the radio comments. I do think that there's a lot of... <coughs> Sorry. I do think there's a lot of uh, there's been a lot of chat. Mercedes fans are not happy with Toto Wolf. Understandably. You know, he is the leader of the team. The team has declined considerably in the last year and a half. Could even say declined in 2021, to be honest. Could say that the warning signs were there strategically before 2021 you know we've always said the whole you know lewis and inshallah kind of strategy of you know bailing them out monaco 2019 prime example lewis being put onto inappropriate tires for you know 60 laps or so basically winning because it's impossible to overtake around monaco and he's lewis hamilton basically you know Things like that are the chickens coming home to roost. That's what some people are saying online with regards to Toto Wolf. And the radio messages between Toto and, and Lewis would point to a situation, some people would say, where... Is that tension? Does Toto Wolf have the right to talk to Lewis like that? Lewis has been carrying this team for, you know, the best part of a decade. You've given him a shit car. He's voicing frustration about the fact that he's got penalties. He doesn't see drivers around him getting penalties. Who is Toto Wolf to tell him to essentially, you know, shut up and drive the car? I don't know if I... 
It'd be great to know what you guys think in the comments. Let us know in the comments what you think of the of the Ray J messages between Toto Wolf and, and Lewis Hamilton. I mean, for me, I I saw it as a team principal. I think first and foremost, understanding the predicament his driver was in. Lewis, we understand the car is bad. You know, just drive the car. Because you never know what might happen in a race. Everyone was going to, you know, the thought was, if you've got a penalty, everyone's going to get penalties ahead. We need to be as close to everyone else as possible. And can you do that if you're so pre-concerned with how other, everyone else is doing with track limits, right? On the other hand, some would say, you know, Lewis is <clears throat> in a moment where, he, you know, was the stick the right response to, uh, to a driver that is clearly in a heightened emotional state? You know when your parents well. I hope your parents never said this, but some parents and some people will uh, be able to relate to when you This is so horrible saying this. When your parents would be, <laughs> and then you'd start crying, they'd be like, oh, you know, I'll give you something to cry about. I was like, this is not the appropriate... <laughs> this is not the appropriate thing right now. As some would say... Toto shouldn't have replied in such a stern way, especially in front of everyone. Is he trying to bring Hamilton down a peg or two, you know? Is he drawing more attention to what Lewis is saying? A lot of the headlines are about that now. Some headlines are talking about whether Lewis will sign a new contract, given everything that Toto said, you know? That relationship is fractured. But I think, you know, I think we can put that to bed. I think everyone knows the contract is pretty much signed. Toto and Lewis have been pretty clear. It's not about money. Money's been sorted, which is normally the biggest sticking point in a contract, right? Remuneration for work completed. And that's sorted. So it's all about legacy, ambassador, maybe equity. And if anyone deserves equity in, in an F1 team, it's Lewis Hamilton. That's what people don't understand. Your driver, your driver, most drivers, I want X amount of money. Maybe there's some image rights things in there. Our driver is talking about ownership, ownership of his rights, ownership of his image, ownership of his legacy afterwards. I helped build this brand, this modern brand, into what it is today. I did what Schumacher didn't. I did what Rosberg didn't. Bottas, Russell. I did what they didn't. And I became the face of this company globally. I have increased your value into nine figures. Ten figures. Billions. Your marketing value has skyrocketed, skyrocketed because of me. Do you think you would have a Tommy Hilfiger sponsorship if I wasn't here? Do you think you would sell as much merch if I wasn't here? Do you think that you would have the same amount of attention on social media if it wasn't for me? And you can say what you want about Lewis Hamilton. He's a fraud. He's arrogant. He's this, he's that. One thing that guy is going to do is make whoever he partners with money. Do you think these knee burgers are popping up, up and out of there because it's the most incredible vegan food ever? It's not, respectfully. Respectfully. The things he attaches his name to make money. And he wants a larger portion of that. He doesn't just want his salary for being a driver. He wants his remuneration for being the face of the company, the face of the sport. 
I don't begrudge him that. And that's not a conversation that is just going to be solved in one go. And that's pretty hard to put into contracts. So I don't think one radio message is going to affect that. And I don't think a relationship which has been built over seven, eight years, nine years nearly, Wait, 2013 to 2023, we're 10 years now. This is the 11th year. That's not going to be affected by whatever radio message came on in the Austrian Grand Prix. Like, guys, relax. Relax. But if you think differently, let me know. Would love to know. I would love to know. Other talking points on the weekend, McLaren look great. Can they keep it up? Great drive from Lando Norris, who was my star of the day. But he's got to he's got to chill on the snitching, bro. That's coming like Randall. Okay, it's not every day snitch. And you know what? Yeah, it's almost like being look watching snitches get rewarded. My guy got bumped up. He got snitched on by Alonso. But then he's the one who gained the place because Sainz got a penalty. We can't, we can't let them things run around here. We can't let snitches think that snitching is, is a progressive way to exist in society. Personally, it's what I think. But in all seriousness, big up Lando Norris. I thought that was a great drive. Ferrari. Are Ferrari back? They look a bit more consistent. I think they were robbed due to qualifying issues. In Canada, Charles Leclerc seemed to be driving whatever Charles Leclerc was driving on on, uh, on Saturday and Sunday in Canada. We're kind of looking at their true pace now, and they've got some good pace. They look comfortably second fastest car on the grid now. Which brings us to Red Bull. Guys, this is scary. This is scary. Guys, Max Verstappen pulled out a 24-second gap in his third stint. Pitted for soft tyres. Had a gap of like two, three seconds. Was weaving down the straight with Charles Leclerc like two seconds behind him just to get heat into his tyres like it was a qualifying lap and then did fastest lap. And to you know the thing is, that's mad with that Red Bull thing, yeah. You can hate Red Bull as much as you want. Trust me, I do. But I respect a well-oiled team. I, can, I know a well-oiled team when I see one. That's why the comparisons with Man City are, like, very accurate. Man City get the job done. If you don't know who Man City are, they're a football team. They just won the treble in the UK. Fucking Premier League, FA Cup, Champions League. All three trophies. Well-oiled team. Don't ever really think they're going to mess up. When it comes to crunch time, they get the job done. As much as we were all praying on Red Bull to not get that stop right, did anyone actually think that stop wasn't going to go right? And in a pressure cooker situation, these men that are, what, 2.3 stop? I think Lewis is like 2.9, maybe? 2.7 max? Mercedes could never do what Red Bull just did then. I would be shitting my pants if Mercedes did that. There's no chance in hell I would trust my team to do that. That's a depressing thing. Yes, they cheated. Yes, the cost cap infringement penalty was nowhere near as harsh as it should have been. How they got away with track violations this weekend, I don't know. Although Paris did get screwed over, let's be honest, let's be honest, in qualifying. But they've got... 
What can he fucking do, bro? Them men are well oiled. They are practicing pit stops. They are prioritizing strategy. They are when the safety car, when the virtual safety car come out. To be fair, it's easy to make strategy. Like Mercedes, when your car is considerably quicker than everyone else. Trust me, go back and watch, go back and watch the 2020 F1 season. You will see Red Bull make disastrous, disastrous strategy calls. <laughs> Trying to go on to Inters when it's not Inter. Even Max Verstappen's famous Brazil performance, I'm sure there's a point where he's on the wrong tyres because they just gambled. But it's easy when you've got the fastest car to say, you know what, I'm going to stay out because I don't need to come in because I've got the fastest car. I can just do whatever race I'm going to have. They're not going to undercut me. It's not going to be hard on fresh tyres to catch them. Do you see that car behind Leclerc when it was about to pass? Even Perez, when Perez was going through those last two corners, normally in dirty air, blah, 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 can't stand it. Then it was, it was like Jaws ting, bro. Da, 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 blah, blah, blah. Madness. You see them sharks and dolphins and them things that are mashing up people in the ocean? That's Red Bull, bro. Just mashing up everyone's boat, bro. Mashing up the people in them boat. Shit is fucked up, man. What can we do? What can we do? Until we build a better car, until FIA step in, nothing's going to happen, bro. Nothing's going to happen. And we're just going to have to eat shit. And we're going to have to... The same way as Mercedes fans, we were enjoying it. Everyone had to eat shit. It's our turn. And it sucks. But... It would be awesome if we could get close to racing. It would be awesome if Perez could be a better championship contender. If there was an inter-team rivalry, there wouldn't be as much complaints. At least during Mercedes domination, 2040 to 16, there was an inter-team rivalry. There was different people winning between Nico and Lewis. Although 2015 was a bit of a cakewalk. They, some would argue, you know, I think Rosberg won the final three races after the championship was done. 2017-18, there was Vettel and Ferrari, so we at least had an inter-team battle, and, you know, Ferrari fell off. That's, you know, that's their point. That's their problem. Vettel fell off. That's his problem. But, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. But I enjoyed Spielberg. But let's see. Let's see what you guys... Oh, my God, my nose. Let's see what you guys had to say. With the stars of the day and donkeys of the day. Oh, gosh. Right, here we go. Stars of the day. Let's get a couple up. I'm sorry. This probably should have been with me before I uh, I got this up. Right. So, and by the way, if you've got this one, well, make sure to like and subscribe to the podcast. Uh, right. So let's start with Ah Becca at the Becca, long time listener. Met each other at the live shows. Big up Becca, who I believe is in Cuba right now. And um, Becca said, "Star, no one impressed me today. <laughs> very easy, very hard to impress. Clearly, donkey." The track for remaining on the calendar until 2030 with them shit track limits. I mean, guys, <coughs> they've got to sort this out. I don't know whether that's some AstroTurf or AstroGrass, whether it's gravel, whether it's this, whether it's that, they've got to sort it out. Got to sort it out. Like, and Silky agrees uh, at XO, Silky at XO. I hope I pronounced that right. And also, your Patreon, your Patreon on the Patreon, I really appreciate you always commenting on our posts on the Patreon. You are an absolute angel. Thank you for your support, as always. Uh, she says, the donkey is this fucking track design. On board, it's not even fun to watch. The flow is very stunted due to track limits. I mean, yeah. Not great, right? Not great. Um, Dev says, star Ferrari for finally showing up, right? 
finally showing up. Could they have done something different with signs? We're looking at a situation where, man, Carlos Sainz got fucked over by that double stack. And everyone and their mother could have seen that was going to happen. They weren't far enough apart for them to sort it out. The pit stop was slow in the first place. They had cars all around them. It's not like, for me, yeah, double stacks only work if your driver doesn't have to slow down and you've got enough space to get out without them being fucked over. Or you do it where you absolutely have to. Because the fucking track is wet. Let's get on to fucking inters. Otherwise, it's going to be unsafe for the driver to be on track. Just keep signs out. Haven't run the same race as Max. But they're so concerned with keeping Charles happy. They're so paralysed by their own incompetence that they don't want to make more mistakes. But then they make more mistakes on top of that. This shit don't make no sense. Don't be scared trying to not make a mistake and then make a mistake. Now your driver's overcompensating. He's getting track limits. He's got a penalty. So between all of them, they're still fucked up anyway. Shit don't make no sense. Don't make no sense. Uh, who else have we got here? Um, we have... Uh, let's do uh, PG876, uh, who says, and I quote, Lewis is the star of the day for still giving out praises to his team after being condemned with a shit box. Uh, Donkey Lando for being a big snitch. Talking points with Stadies is still ass. As as gorgeous as W fourteen BBL's ass is, you know, it's, it's still it's still cheeks, still cheeks. Do you know what I mean? Not for me, not for me. Uh, and lastly, uh, Lucy Morris simply says, "I fell asleep at lap sixty. I was I was close to it. As you can tell, I'm not feeling great." Um. And I was struggling to stay awake at points, but you kind of like kind of fighting through it and you're like, I want to see what happens. Something might happen. Um, but it wasn't, I, I did think, it, you know, the Carlos Sainz Checo battle was good. I think that's probably what kept me awake, to be honest. Um, Cause that was some incredible racing, but yeah. How about that? But well, look, that was the Austrian Grand Prix. I guess before I go, how was your guys' day today? What did you guys get up to? Did you uh, get up to anything special? See anything? Let me tell you about my day. Oh, gosh. So, two twos now, bro. Obviously, I'm at work. Obviously, I've got a nice little shirt on with the... With the, you know, with the jumper, looking nice. I got a trim last week. Dude, it's got my ears pierced. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Boom. Gets to the afternoon, about one-ish. I'm like, let me get a quick lunch, quick food. I didn't bring lunch with me. Normally I bring lunch with me. You know I me, mean? I'm a chef. Sometimes I might have a little... Spag bowl. Maybe a little curry thing. Noodles, Chinese. Anything you want, I can cook it. Didn't have that today. Why? I was ill from... Uh-huh. Okay. So I go out. I'm in South Kensington, which is in Chelsea. Home of Made in Chelsea. Spencer, Jamie, all of them man there. Where they film all of that stuff, where all their men are from. Posh area, okay? That's where I work. So, <coughs> I was sending a voice note to Cameron. Big up, Cameron. And I was like, sending one, we're just talking about F1 content creation, this, that, the other. And I'm sending a voice note, and you can literally hear in the voice note, 
لا 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 متيا هود انا هود انا براف I'm walking down the street who am I seeing but Tim Bernard is just walking towards me bruv I'm like what is that what they... and the thing is I know the things that I noticed yeah the curly hair first and foremost and I'm like oh that looks like Mattia Bernard's hair then it was the glasses I was like bruv that is Mattia Bernard and I said I, as I was walking to, I was like Mattia and he's like yes and I was like oh my god I was like I'm, can I have a picture with you please took the picture and I was just like you know what yeah I seen my man last year people are getting on him not me maybe me a little bit but it was a tough year for Ferrari last year which is crazy when you think about it it's actually worse this year so I mean but yeah no I saw him and uh, yeah, I think I was just like, did a great job, man. Uh, I think I was like, did a great job. Don't listen to that. Don't listen to the haters. Um, miss you in Formula One or something along those lines. And he was just like, oh, thank you, thank you. And I just let him go on with his day. And it was like the most random Monday afternoon thing I've ever like encountered in my life. And it was mad. It was like the first time I've seen someone from within the paddock since I started the podcast. I don't leave my house other than to go to work, gym now, and that is it. Like, if it's not one of those two things, it's very difficult to get me out of the house. So I don't really expect to run into F1 people. Um, So it was super cool. He's really nice, really nice. I always think, like, it must be mad to have people stop you in the street and ask for your picture. Like, it's happened once to me. Big up whoever listens to this podcast <laughs> who stopped their car <laughs> in the middle of the fucking street. Had me thinking I was going to get fucking drive-by shot in Tottenham to ask for a picture. Um, that's the only time that that has happened to me. Outside of a live show, of course, but you kind of expect that. For someone to just walk you, uh, stop you walking down the street and ask for a picture who you don't know um, must be crazy. But he did it. He was really nice. Uh, it was a really nice picture. And uh, yeah, big up a tear, but no, man. That was, that was awesome. That was really, really cool. Um, so yeah, we've come to the end of the show. Sorry, it's just me, guys. Like, honestly, you have no idea. Content creators will tell I nearly cried today. Like, I honestly, I was just like, we had probably one of the best podcast episodes we've ever had uh, with Tony, Cameron Brown, which we'll piece together for you and kind of get her best bits from it. She is an incredible guest. Incredible guest. In a way that we have incredible guests all the time you know we're so lucky with the guests we're going to podcast anyone who we ask to come on the show we would only ask them because we feel like an affinity with them not just from like an entertainment point of view look i've actually started turning down people who asked to come on the show uh, let me tell you now i feel like airing that mother out. I'm not going to air them out, but there's one, one page, a very popular Formula One page, that asked to come on the show because they noticed that we don't like Alonso, and they were like, it'd be cool to have a show where we have like a debate about Fernando Alonso, and I said. One, they don't even follow us, so you know that's a setup. So you don't follow us, but you see our content, but now you want to come on my show, our show, and you want to debate Alonso so that you could chuck me to the walls of the Spanish Armada and how they are for what? For bats, for clout. Fuck off. 
And I said that politely. And I said, if you want to come on the show and we can like have a normal podcast, then fine. Did I get a reply? Did I fuck? Public service announcement. This show is not a fucking clout pick me up for you, man, anymore. Okay? We're not just here so you can come on our show right off the back of our shit and get more popular. Last time I did a debate, I ended up with racists in my mentions, Tandy's mentions, our fucking podcast mentions. The worst type of mentions I've ever seen in my life. You want me to spend my time debating Fernando? Get the fuck out of here, bro. Tony is not like that. Tony is, um... You know what, yeah? There's not a lot of people who say they're about uplifting others' diversity, but actually mean it and actually are actioning towards that and are about that on a daily basis. And I think that it was really quite incredible how how she was on the podcast. And it's such a shame that the interactions between her and Tandy uh, just aren't going to be able to be had because it was some incredible content. And, um, oh yeah, I nearly cried. Honestly, because you're just like, you're so helpless. And you just feel responsible for everyone. You feel responsible for Tony's time. You feel responsible for Tandy's time, Chris's time, Mario's time. Tandy not being able to be on the product and, you know, and, and not being able to share, like, her talents. And, you know, especially when she's done so well on it and, you know... You just feel really um, responsible, is probably the word. And, um, yeah, it's hard, man. Content creation is hard. It's so hard. Like, I'm always on the point of burnout, exhaustion. And, you know, that's my fault because I love it. I love working. I love doing this. I love seeing the growth. I love interacting with you guys. But then it's it's times like today where you're like, oh man, I'm so tired, <laughs> and um, it just sucks. It sucks. But you know, we lessons learned, and you're gonna have that if you make content. Oh my god, every content creator has got a story about some content that hasn't worked when they've done it, and it, that's just the way that it goes. And it's our first one for a while, I would say. Look. Before we had Chris and Mario, this shit used to happen all the fucking time. So, um, yeah. I think we had one this season with Trayvon. Um, and it hasn't happened since. And it's look, it's going to happen again. Something's going to happen. Uh, and all you can do is just try and do as best as you can. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed this. Um... And I want to say, you know what? I want to say happy birthday to Tandy. Um, thank you for changing my life forever. For supporting me in, in doing this and supporting me personally when I was going through things and for just being like a... I really can't describe you. There's, she's such a special person. I've never met someone... I've never met anyone like Tandy in my life. And it's crazy that I get to share this passion that I have for Formula One with her and for us to grow this together and for us to be able to share this with you all. And I couldn't have... I, I literally couldn't have imagined someone that I would want to share it more than with Tandy. And a lot of people don't realise, like, you know, if it wasn't for Tandy, this would be just such a different 
podcast. It'd be such a different platform. It'd be so dry. It'd be this. <laughs> and this is good once in a while. But this isn't what the people want. And she gives the people what they want. She gives people what they don't want. But then we know that those are the people who don't want coming with us. And she deserves her flowers. More than anyone. Because the bravery that she has to turn up and be herself, her un flinchingly honest and true and and unique self in the face of some of the most vile shit I have seen. Creepy men who should know fucking better. It's just incredible and it's an inspiration to me all the time. And uh, I'm just so grateful to have her in my life. And I hope you guys are grateful for her as well because um, this podcast would be, be nowhere without her. And I'm just super grateful for her. So happy birthday, Tandy. Um, sorry that this fucked up on your birthday, but uh, <laughs> shit happens. Um, and yeah, I think I'll leave it there. Thank you guys for listening. If you've got this far, give us a like, give us a subscribe. And, uh, yeah, we'll be back with some kind of show on Wednesday or Thursday, Friday, at some point, before the British Grand Prix. We'll be back with some kind of content that we've, uh, we get from the Tony show. Um, and we'll be back on Tuesday next week with Tandy and a guest. And, um... I hope you know technical issues. And look, now more than ever, guys, no matter what life throws at you, keep it on the black stuff. Until next time, take care. Look, mate, if you've got this far, clearly you like what we do. So here's a link to subscribe to the Quicksub Perform family. Give that a click. And here's another link to some more cool on our channel. Sorry, cool, cool stuff, stuff, stuff. And... Remember, no matter what happens, keep it on the black stuff. Click the stuff. Click the click the links. Click the the link the links. Click the links. There. There there.